Hello friends and welcome to a new episode of Lucid 9. Last time we left off we started this game and got like the introduction bit like going on and yeah without further ado let's continue. Wordlessly I turn and head down the corridor. Guess someone's Slightly touchy, not that I can blame her. If I had a student like me, I'd hate him too. I jump down the stairs to the first floor and stop, da stop before a door at the edge of a hallway, bearing the sign, Gear Yota, Drone Manager. I rap sharply on the wood three, three times. Mr. Ryota? <coughs> what is it? Nuclear war? What? No? Meh. Don't feel like opening the door for anything less important. I could open the door myself. Locked it. Don't bother. I pressed my ear against the door, listening keenly. And there it is. Action packed orchestral strings. Just barely bleeding through the wood. Faint cl clanging of swords on shields. Um, are you in a clan war, Mr. Ryota? <laughs> silence. A deep silence. Bah! A moment later, and the door's lock clicks open. I slip inside the room, holding back a smile. The office is minimalistic and it's furnishing, but fairly welcoming. Warm light enc encompasses the room to hide. Highlighting com the comfortable chairs arranged around a coffee table that bears a bowl of potato, potato, potato chips. It looks more like the office of a service rather than the office of a school dorm manager. Wow, that room is really fancy. In the room I spot a commonly mah mahogany desk on top of which sits Jiro Ryota in a very dramatic position. <laughs> Welcome to the setting room. Have you brought an offering to appease the Dark Lord? Indeed I have. With an equally ex 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 bow, I present the book and note from my teacher. Mr. Ryota's eyebrows shrunk, shrunk, scrunch in confusion. The hell is this? I er... Uh, kind of... got in a trouble earlier, so tracking back. And instead of detention, the teacher convinced that I need a more permanent solution. Like death? I can help you with that. Whoa. That's deep. She was thinking more along the lines of counseling, I believe, not death. Oh, okay. But what the hell is this? He shakes, sh uh, he, he shakes the book empathically. The curriculum that the teacher recommends for, you know, helping me. Oh, right, well, well, I'll put it where it belongs. He plumbly throws it into the trash where he extracts a laugh from me. No, to business. Let me read about what exactly your teacher wants. His eyes drift over the paper that I silently hand to him. Oh. Ha! Oh boy, isn't this precious? Let me translate. Mr. Diriota, I'm having trouble subduing a boy who actually has a brain and doesn't care for the in inefficiencies of Boreocracy. I have no idea if I'm saying this right. Why is there so many difficult words? Why is this? Sincerely, a woman who suddenly the. Sincerely, a woman who was suddenly the most boring person in her graduating class. I choke back laughter as she crumples the paper file into a ball and locks it into the trash. <laughs> By the way, don't tell anyone I said that, or I might get fired. And then you'd have to take counseling from, from Mrs. Hanazawa. And then where would you be? Consider the NDA signed. Mr. Rieta reclines easily against his chair, picking his legs on the table. So, how's the apartment? Still in one piece. Mostly, I guess. Good to hear, and Phil? 
feel? The little house plant, the one I placed on your shelf. Your memory sh sucks more than mine, kid. Oh, right. About that, I vaguely remember Mr. Red forming an odd att attachment to a plant where I'd move into my apartment. Even to the point where he named him Phil. I think he died. Sorry, kids. Oh, that's a bit odd. I thought he was a fake plant. Nope, looks fake on the outside, I guess, but not real inside. A satisfied smile closed at Mr. Rieta's lips, and I suddenly realized the metaphor. We are not talking about plants, are we? Your optimism is fine, kid. I would have thought your answer would be the contrary. What? People look real on the outside, but they're all fake inside? Like, what, what is that supposed to mean? Something like that. We were talking about plants, how was I supposed to know? Well, you know... So now that you know, is your answer the same? No? Didn't you have to think about it? It's the truth. People pretend to be genuine on the outside, but inside they're nothing. Whoa, that's hard. Mr. Ryota evaluates me for a moment, but to my surprise, he, there's no judging in his gaze. You must be a real party pleaser. I'll be here a week. What made you draw such a depressing conclusion? I can tell that it's my mind on the fast track of psychoanalysis. Turned to trauma, clinical depression, and suicidal tendencies. Sentiment that that depressed. Because if anything should be blamed, it should be my 100% natural disdain for humanity. Power, ob ob power ob 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 observation, if anything. People like to be strong, confident, impotent on their side. Feel that way, and what do you get? Their heart? Then that heart must be pretty pathetic. Wow, why am I harsh? Did I ever say otherwise? No, no, I guess he didn't. <laughs> Mr. Rita eases from the topic and leans back on his chair, drawing a planner from his door. Drawer. Drawer. Well, if it, if it were up to me, I'd say that you're just like any other early teenager going through the first throes of seniority. But paperwork's been signed. I knew how bureaucracy was, goes. I thought our government was supposed to be more efficient since the na national changes. Ha! Huh. Do you assume the mayor actually does some anything important? He crawls something down on his tablet and taps up the screen. My phone buzzes gently in my pocket. Your teacher recommended that we meet every day, but honestly, who has the time for that? And nobody got time for that. We'll just play it by you. And you let me know if you ever get the urge to murder someone. Probably means you do it for another checkup. I check what he sent me. A copy of spreadsheet that's taped outside his door. Revealing his available time. Wow. How do you have this much free time? Life as a dorm manager just... Swell, isn't it? I thought... You at least had some kind of job. I'll let you in on a secret. The kids here don't cause much trouble. Not because they're, they're angels, but because they're boring. Because they're too pretty. They don't want to get their manicured nails dirty with things like carpet boots. Wow, that's kind of boring. But they needed someone to cry to when they stub a toe and the other teachers seem to think that I fit that job in description. Actually it's more like that they don't want to deal with criminal grass. So instead of a helicopter parent, I get to be bench farmer who just nods and smiles once every few minutes. Minutes? Minutes? Whatever. Like with me? Well... You'll be more interesting, you'll, uh, well, you'll be more interesting than the rest of them, I hope. Yeah, that sound kind of sounds like the academy in a nutshell. Half the people are too snobby to be fun, and the other ones are too lazy to care. 
What do you get to hear? Why about grades? Toxic relationships? Tell me about it. Sometimes. Sometimes, but not always. At any rate, I can't exactly complain. Makes my job easy. Well, thank, thank you for your massive contribution to society. You're absolutely welcome. They seem to kill yours. I smirk. He chuckles. <laughs> yeah, this could have been really painful if I hadn't hadn't gotten Mr. Ryota. Well, well, as your loving carry and an eyes for a mentor, I hardly keep you from the beauty that is the club requirement day. No, no, I'm fine, really. Off you go, take a selfie and send it to me. Or I'll schedule an appointment tomorrow. But, 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 but you said you need to explain your opportunities more than your horizons. Where no man has gone before. But, 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 and most importantly, you need to get out of my office so I can check my clan. That's just sad, Mr. Riosa. For a communication calls. See ya. And without other words, he shoved me out and slammed the door in my face. Jeez, that's harsh. I have no choice but to head to the school courtyard. It doesn't take much time to find Masato behind the track table on with I Love Track, flags, which flags and I Love Track posters and I Love Track headbands. I get this very vague feeling that he loves track. He welcomes me enthusiast enthusiastically, immediately piling all admin duties to, on, on me. But true to, true, my, true to my word, I proceed to be completely useless throughout the requirement process. Eventually, Masato seems to give up, handing me a simple sign to wave around. I amuse myself by coming up with terrible, with truly terrible pictures. Want a six pack? Giant track! Looking for health hacks? Giant track! Get a snack? Yeah, giant track! Read your luck? Giant track! Pick up the slack? Giant track! Wow, this music is in this. For reasons I know, most of the teams love this. He grins and slaps me on the back. I don't know what kind of voice I gave him. There you go! You just need to apply yourself, Steve! Oh, well that ended. I'm pretty sure that those glances we are getting from the underclassmen are not looks of admiration. Despite my obvious shortcomings, Masata hooks four recruits into the track. Honest, honestly, I'm pretty surprised that he got that many. A lot of the attendees of this school are the richer laser kids. I also noticed that he seems to be a lot easier on them when than he on them than he was on me. When the clock requirement fair is done and everything is done, Masato and I head to the school entrance to wait for Rui, Rui and Yahi Yahiko. For reasons unknown, Masato is ex ecstatically chattering about my newfound enthusiasm. You killed it today, man. That's the kind of team spirit we need. Great. I might have just gotten myself into more trouble. Well, I guess I was in track for most of last year. Might as well do it again this year. To him, and then I said, and then I said, Jesus on a gra gravy stick on metal allowed we could kill some man with your skills. And so he like signed the contract with the blood from his veins. So they'll be permanently joining the drama club. But like, I can't believe you're so good at recruiting people, you know what they said to me. Like, what? What? Something like, get a life, you're just a Daniel with a, about reality. Well damn, my stocks got this days are so chemical. So you come to how the mass of the waves were over. Well, looks like you guys have a plan, I'd better leave you and Yama, I mean, you and everyone else have some nice time together. Like, what are you talking about? It's more like babysitting do you see where, where, I'm, where I'm babys the babysitter and I have to make sure a bunch of kids won't you know set the house on fire and stuff oh come on he's your best friend isn't he a your childhood friend oh yeah but 
Have you guys made a childhood promise together? Wha what? No, no way! Really? Really, like, those kind of things are, are, are more cliche than explosives in an action movie? Like, exactly. Well, think of it this way. All the explosives may be cliche, but they're also stable. You can't have proper action movie without proper explosions. It's the same with life. You can't have a proper childhood friend without proper childhood families. I wish. Does she have to mention romance? Like, really? Uh, uh, look. Oh, there they are. Guess I better get going. Bye. Have fun storming the castle. The girl surely skips away as Rui springs to ask for refuge. I try for a smirk. Looks like you and Akira, Akira uh, had a productive recruitment day. Akira Karube, Rui's best friend, current roommate and self-appointed matchmaker. Also another person who I don't get along with, but let's be honest. Do I get along with anyone? Like, Akira was sure productive. I barely had like any luck. I noticed that she's messed her house up surprisingly quickly. Well, I guess the 10 years of make-believe and drama club would do that to you. Well, how did you guys do? We got 4 new recruits. 15 liters of fresh blood. 15 liters? Like, you just pull that number out of your head or is it actually legit? Real woman, cause it's legit. Average weight 55 kilograms. The average teenager, teenager has a blood volume of 7%. His or her total weight. We got also 4 new recruits. Three sides are already swimming as he raves on, seemingly unaware of the curious glances from refreshmen who have pegged him as a rough shark. Assuming no one's anemic, we got 55x4 in total kilograms, which is 220. Multiply that by 0 0.07 for the weight to blood volume ratio. Bam! Bam! 15.4. Round it up to 15 for a nice round number. We got over 15 liters of fresh blood. I can't math, so I have no idea. And this is why Masato is really good at catching people off guard. Like, I can't actually believe you calculated that. Why, it ain't no trouble. Like, it's so sh Like, it's so shunt like trouble. Hell no. Nah. You should hear what you should hear what we do in Honor Society. Ah, yes, Honor Society. Not only does he participate in it, he's the president. Oh, did I not mention that he's literally good at everything? Athletics, academics, heck, probably even at art. Even art. Except Sakasim. That's the one I re I I re that. I can drum him in. The only area. Oh, like here comes the great Yahiko Ikari. Sure enough, a familiar shock of blood hair pops around the corner. Yahiko's beaming, but I notice that he's not holding a single sign of page in his hand. What kind of voice did I give him? Do you tell to you, my pitiful peasants? You have arrived just in time to witness my brilliant plan. Technically, he was the one who came to us, but I stay silent. You see, I've decided to create my own club. A club worthy of my immeasurable greatness. In other words, he got rejected by all the other clubs. Like, oh bye. You're making a club? Good for you. I know, I'm going to call it the happy club. And it will be... Comprised of minions who will follow my every bidding. I think we just witnessed the creation of the shadiest club on campus. Like, 
probably on the whole earth. We will start by taking over the school, then Isamu, then Japan, then the entire world. Well, at least he doesn't like ambition. And once my mansion on the moon is built, we will have dominion over the universe itself. What? A fabulous idea. But like, he does lack brain. Hey, what you guys talking about our secret like? Huh? Like, uh, nothing, we were just, um, like, talking about how we haven't gone to GFC in a while. As completely unconvincing as this excuse is, she successfully turns most of us attention to food. GFC, I like the way you're thinking, Rui. Really. We better go now before the dinner rest starts. He much herself hum humming cheerily as Yahiko blathers on about how amazing his new club will be. Great cover. I know, boy. Totally unconspicuous. Like, just as unconspicuous as that time you wore a kimono. What are you talking about? My kimono looks amazing. Of course, she'd bring that up. You wanna get tickled? You wouldn't dare. Whenever you mention about kimonos, I feel a sudden urge to tickle the nearest person. Um, like we'd better get cow going, we should follow Masatan Yahiko to GFC, yeah, bye! She speeds away before I have the chance to stop her. I only chuckle to myself as I catch up. So yeah, I'm gonna end this episode here. And yeah, one thing I forgot to mention uh, in the last episode is that this game is completely free, so I know if you want to support the creator, go download the game from Steam and play it yourself, or you can watch my playthrough of it, that's always an option. So yeah, if you enjoyed this episode and are excited for the next episode, make sure to leave a like, and comment something below, and make sure to subscribe to keep up with my shenanigans. I'll see you in the next one, have some love, bye bye!